good morning hey. so let's talk a little bit about how you guys use agile at dream mobile okay. what are the methodologies or tools you use to make sure you are following and delivering on on any promise of agile mm -hmm. all right um, at dream mobile we use the scrum methodology under the agile development methodologies that have been uh, you know that have been formed over okay. the last few years. Okay. So Scrum is one of the methodologies that we have adopted for okay. our projects here. Okay. So we have uh, multiple uh, number of uh, number of methodologies that mm. Agile professes and has come up with. Okay. From those we opted for the Scrum methodology. Okay. The reason, prominent reason to opt for Scrum was that it was it provided an easier transition from the traditional model. Okay. To the Agile model. Okay. Um, because one that. Scrum is very ceremonious in a way. You, okay. know, you have a lot of rituals okay. that you have to follow. Okay. So say for example, Scrum would expect you to be very ritualistic about certain meetings, okay. certain discussions. Okay. And that is where it kind of became, I would say, easier for us to transition from the traditional methodologies okay. to come to Scrum. Okay. So when I talk about the methodologies that we use, uh, Scrum would actually have... Um, a lot of meetings, okay. but then the meetings are actually there to promote interaction between the team. Okay. So that the team at all times is aware of what they are supposed to deliver, okay. of what they are targeting to achieve. Okay. And that is where a cohesion between a team is also formed. Okay. So when I talk about the Scrum methodology that we uh, implement, the practices that we have to follow, First thing would be a daily stand-up or okay. a scrum meeting that we that we call it. Mm. So it's basically a 15 minute stand-up meeting where every day, mm. every 24 hours is when you're supposed to do a scrum okay. uh, daily stand-up. What happens is the team would come together, mm. they would talk about what they did the previous day, mm. what they're about to do on that specific day mm. and talk about if any issues were faced while doing their tasks, okay. you know, whenever they were doing it. Okay. The detailed solution Mm. for those issues that they might have found mm. would not be discussed in the daily stand-up. Okay. So daily stand-up is supposed to be a stand-up meeting where okay. you're not supposed to sit. So the okay. idea is that the meeting should be short enough that everybody can stand and discuss or whatever right. they're supposed to. Right. And you break up before your legs start taking. Uh, yeah, <laughs> okay. So secondly, uh, a very important thing uh, within Scrum mm. is the iteration planning meeting. Okay. It happens in the beginning of an iteration okay. where the product owner. So actually I was talking about uh, the roles mm. that are, so Scrum has a few roles defined okay. for each of the team members within the Scrum uh, the Scrum team. Okay. So you have the, a product owner, mm. you have a Scrum master, mm. then you have the uh, the Scrum team, okay. the Scrum development team. Okay. So, so the product owner is, is your customer or, or from your... No, the product owner is actually... If we if we talk about the traditional methodology, if I have to draw an analogy, hmm. he would somewhat be a project manager. Oh, okay. Or okay. actually, I can't even draw a direct analogy because hmm. some of the roles that the uh, the older project manager used to hold hmm. that has been split between the scrum master and the product owner. Okay. So product owner essentially would be the guy who gets the requirements from the customer. Okay. And uh, who basically defines the acceptance criteria. Okay. So he's the he's basically the face, uh, the, the uh, link between the customer and the team. Okay. And he would make sure that he understands what the customer wants. Hmm. And that is where he would also be the owner hmm. of the product inside his own organization. Inside the development team. Because okay. for the team, he's hmm. the one who they are delivering the product to. Okay. Okay. And he defines the acceptance criteria for any of the features to be okay. passed or failed. Okay. Scrum Master, on the other hand, uh, is more of an operational guy. He has to make sure that uh, things are working on schedule. Okay. I mean, the things are approaching in the right direction. And he's there to help out the team. Okay. So, in a way, he's taken up the role of the old uh, team leads come project manager. Okay. So, it's technical and... As well as, as, well as a little managerial. Manager, yes, yes. Work. So, he okay. has to make sure that things are going as per right. schedule. Okay. As well as the tasks that have been assigned to the team. They're not facing any issues with the okay. task, and if they do face any issues or roadblocks, he would be there to help them out. Okay. The third uh, role, which is of a team member, mm. simply could be anybody. It could be a developer, it could be a tester, it could be a, a, a technical writer. Mm. Any of these roles would essentially be called as a team member okay. in Scrum methodology. Okay. So, 
when we say cross functional teams in right. agile development right we talk about all these different roles coming together okay and but we never want to distinguish them by saying that you are a developer or you are a tester we all okay. just we say that you are a team member okay and that is where the cohesion between the team actually kind of develops further okay so we have these three roles and then what happens is uh, coming back to the uh, practices that we follow in scrum mm-hmm. I was talking about the iteration planning. Hmm. Iteration planning is a very long meeting. Uh, it usually extends up to say five, six hours. Okay. What you do is in iteration planning. By the time you get into an iteration planning meeting, the product owner would have already decided that these are the tasks that this iteration is supposed to have. Okay. So these are the tasks which which the team has has to work on. Okay. So when they come into the iteration planning meeting, hmm. the tasks are laid out. Okay. The deadline is laid out. the team now would discuss all these features or the user stories as we call them in scrum hmm. they would be discussed with the product owner okay so the product owner would explain what exactly is that feature about and the acceptance criteria that he would uh, want okay. you know, before he can actually pass a feature as as okay okay so that is what happens in details and at the same time the assignment of these uh, user stories happen within the team members at that time okay another difference from the traditional methodology here would be where uh, the the manager is not deciding who works on what okay rather we throw it up to the team saying that okay you decide what is the task that you are most comfortable working on okay and what is the best that you can actually provide in terms of the task that you have right now okay so the team chooses picks and chooses and then obviously it's the responsibility of the scrum master to make sure that nobody is overloaded okay so he has to maintain that okay uh, one guy is only working for say x y z number of hours mm. and uh, he's not really over going uh, over going overboard in terms of the tasks that he can handle also mm. within that uh, time frame okay but then the team basically picks up the tasks themselves and then once you get a user story to your name in the same meeting what we encourage is that the team would break down the user story into multiple tasks okay so what happens is that you get a user story a user story is very simple uh, it's it's a very simple communication from the customer as to what is the feature that they're looking for mm. so when i say a user story a user story could be as simple as saying uh, i want i want a software which allows my employees to log in mm. and see a um, a list of uh, bookings for mm. example mm. so it's as simple as that mm. now obviously for the for the developer he for his his work would not end there mm. his work is to try to provide flesh and blood to this entire user story it's mm. just a skeleton in a way mm-hmm. so what he would do is he would break down tasks in terms of say for example i have to create a user mm. uh, i mean user login screen mm. on the click of this button this should happen mm. on uh, once the user has logged in he should see a list mm. should be like, a table mm. or whatever right. the the control that he wants to right. use there right. so he has to be actually detailing out his his tasks for the user story at that moment in the iteration planning meeting okay so that is the reason why this meeting would take a very long time okay but once that is done mm-hmm. you have kind of triggered off an iteration okay and at that time is when uh, the iteration is in a way beginning hmm. so from the next day or from the moment you go back to your desks after hmm. the meeting is done you would start working on the tasks that you have laid out for okay. yourself okay talking about the other uh, practices that we follow one is um, iteration review which happens at the end of the iteration hmm. and iteration uh, and a lot of iterations can actually be you know seen together as one release okay. so i can also do a release planning hmm. i can also do a release review and i can also do a release retrospective okay so retrospective is actually something which is quite important and it should a lot of times we can also involve uh, people from the customers end to participate in that meeting where they can actually say what went i mean what what went right what and what went, right went wrong what okay. went wrong and okay. something which could actually be bettered in the coming in the releases next. or the next okay. iteration okay. these are the major practices that we follow okay. around the uh, scrum methodology okay. great thank you